Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is a quick recap series. Uh, today's topic in from embryology is formation of gut tubes. Again, I have done a detailed session. Please go through that before you come for a quick recap or else you will find it difficult because I won't be going through the entire details. I'll be just brushing through the topics. So let's begin. So derivatives of foregut. We know that floor of mouth including the tongue, pharynx, derivatives of the pharyngeal pouches and thyroid, esophagus, stomach, duodenum up to the second part. That part you have to remember. Then you have the liver and extrahepatic biliary system, pancreas and respiratory system. All these are said to be derivatives of foregut. Now coming to the derivatives of midgut, you have the duodenum distal to the major papillae, jejunum, ileum, cecum and appendix, ascending colon and transverse colon of, uh, only up to the right two-third. And from the uh, hindgut, you have the remaining portion of the transverse colon, descending and pelvic colon, rectum, then you have the upper part of anal canal and also parts of the urogenital system derived from the primitive urogenital sinus. Uh, coming to the arterial supply, we have the foregut, midgut and hindgut uh, supplied by the major branches of the abdominal iota. From the for, for the foregut, you have the celiac artery. You can see the celiac artery here. Then midgut, you have the superior mesenteric artery and uh, hindgut, you have the inferior mesenteric artery. Now, uh, the midgut is actually forming a loop that is known as midgut loop and you have the superior mesenteric artery running through the loop. Due to the presence of this artery, you can divide the loop into a segment uh, before the artery and a segment after the artery. So you call this as pre-arterial segment and this segment gives rise to the distal duodenum and coils of the jejunum and ileum. Now coming to the post-arterial segment, you have the lower ileum, cecum, appendix, ascending colon and proximal two-third of the transverse colon. So this is pre-arterial and this is post-arterial. Usually uh, with the formation of the midgut lobe, they come out of the abdominal cavity because there is no enough space during the developmental period. But it will go back to its original position by around 10th week. So this is known as physiological hernia. Now the original mesentery, the fold of the peritoneum which suspends the entire GIT, will persist for the small intestine as mesentery of jejunum and ileum, for the transverse colon as transverse mesocolon and for the sigmoid colon as sigmoid mesocolon whereas the rest of the region will just disappear. Now talking about mesentery, in the beginning we know that uh, the part which is lying uh, behind the stomach you call this as, it is differentiated as dorsal mesogastrium and the part lying in front is known as ventral mesogastrium. For the duodenum, you call it as dorsal mesoduodenum. Uh, then for the small intestine, the mesentery proper, which is actually persisting even after uh, development. And you have for the colon as dorsal mesocolon. The ventral mesogastrium by the presence of the liver is differentiated as lesser omentum between the stomach and the liver. And between the abdominal wall and the liver, you have the falciform ligament. So this is the falciform ligament. Now coming to the intraembryonic coelom, the cavity within the intraembryonic mesoderm, you have it differentiated into pericardial cavity, pleural cavity and peritoneal cavity and they are separated by two separate membranes. One is known as pleuropericardial membrane which separates the pleural cavity from pericardium and the other one is known as pleuroperitoneal membrane between the pleural cavity and peritoneum and you have the heart and lung invaginating into in the pleural and pericardial cavities. Now coming to the pericardial cavity, the derivatives, the parietal layer of serous and the fibrous pericardium, they are derived from the somatopleuric mesoderm. Whereas the visceral layer of the pericardium uh, that is developed from the splangenopleuric mesoderm. Now when we talk about the anterior body wall defects, uh, if there is a defect in the anterior body wall of thorax, you call that condition as ectopia cordis and you will see the heart lying in front of, I mean to the exterior. If you have an anterior bo uh, body wall defect in the abdomen, you call the condition as gastroschisis. There is another entity known as omphilocele. These two are usually, um, if you don't know the ent uh, real difference, you will go it wrong. Omphilocele is a condition where the gut tube, which uh, usually came into the exterior of the uh, abdominal cavity, that is what is meant by physiological hernia, 
fails to go back to its original position. So if it is remaining out there uh, without going back, that condition is known as omphalocele. So what are the features of omphalocele? You can see the gut tubes, they are lying outside, but they are covered by the amnion. This is usually associated with cardiac and neural tube defects. You will get an elevated alpha fetoprotein. The striking feature is chromosomal abnormalities will be present when you compare it with gastroschisis. In gastroschisis, you will get the tubes lying outside, but there won't be any covering for the tube. Amnion will be absent and there won't be any chromosomal abnormalities as well in gastroschisis. So identify this condition. This is a thoracic region and you can see the heart lying outside. So this condition is known as ectopia cordis. Identify the clinical condition. In the abdominal region, you can see the coils, but it is not covered by the amnion. So it is gastroschisis. You can see the coils outside, but it is covered by an amnion. That condition is known as omphalocele. So this region, you can see the bladder lying outside. So this condition is known as bladder extrophy. And here the cloacal region is li uh, lying outside. So extrophy means lying outside. So cloacal extrophy. Now, um, what do you mean by cantral pentology? Uh, so it is a cluster of uh, clinical conditions. They are, the, you will get ectopia cardis, you will get omphalocele and gastroschisis, whichever. Then you will get absent pericardium, there will be defects in the sternum and there will be defect in the anterior region of diaphragm. So if all these come together, you call it as cantral pentology. Now talking about congenital diaphragmatic hernia, I have done a detailed session, please have a look at it. Uh, we have already mentioned about the membrane that is pleuroperitoneal membrane separating the pleural cavity from the peritoneal cavity. If there is a defect in fusion of this membrane, what happens is, the abdominal viscera from the peritoneal cavity will herniate into the pleural cavity. This is usually most common in the left side and as a result the lung won't be able to develop. As a result you will get pulmonary hypoplasia. The commonest form you call it as Bogdalek hernia. Others, other varieties are Mogagni hernia, diaphragmatic eventuration and central tendon defects. All these I have done a detailed session. So this is absence of uh, pleuroperitoneal membrane and you can see that it is most commonly seen on the left side and you can see the abdominal cavity contents herniating into the thoracic cavity. So fetal period is from 9 weeks to birth, we know it. Derivatives of foregut include all except duodenum up to second part, liver and extra biliary apparatus, respiratory system, we know that all these are der derived from foregut, so none of the above. Artery of midgut, it is superior mesentric artery. Celiac artery is foregut, the inferior mesenteric artery is artery of hindgut. Post arterial segment includes all except cecum, appendix, distal duodenum, proximal to third of the transverse colon. It is distal duodenum, it is a part of pre arterial segment. Chromosomal abnormalities are present in omphalocele. Gastroschisis, uh, though it is a defect of the anterior abdominal wall, it won't be covered with amnion and you won't get any chromosomal abnormalities. Cantral spentology include ectopia cordis, omphalocele, both none. You will get both. All are true about congenital diaphragmatic hernia except there is failure of fusion of pleuroperitoneal membrane. Most common on the right side, pulmonary hypoplasia, commonest is boktelic. It is most common on the left side. That is the exception. So that's about uh, the development of the gut tubes in a nutshell. So please keep watching, please leave your comments, please subscribe and share so that uh, daily I will get motivated to do more and more videos. Uh, so uh, please see the detailed versions from my channel. This is just a quick recap within 20 minutes. Thanks for watching.